a harsh jungle, little equipment, no money, and a crazed actor. These are the challenges Werner Herzog dealt with when making his feature film, Aguirre, The Wrath of God, a story about Spanish explorers searching the Amazon for the mythical Golden Kingdom of El Dorado. But was this city of gold just a myth? New evidence suggests there may be truth to the legends. The Amazon is a colossal mystery. For centuries, people around the world have been captivated by the stories of El Dorado. In the 16th century, Spanish explorers such as Gonzalo Pizarro, Pedro de Ursua, and Lope de Aguirre searched for this land of gold, hoping to find its riches. German director Werner Herzog began writing a film script on the search for El Dorado after reading about Lope de Aguirre. Herzog wrote the script at a time in his life while playing for a German soccer team. Much of the writing was done on a bus trip where Herzog faced some unique challenges from his teammates. The screenplay was written in two and a half days during this excursion, all with my left hand because with my right, I had to ward off our goalie, a very tall guy, but he was so drunk and he was leaning into me and, and trying to read. And then finally he vomited over my typewriter and some of the pages were beyond repair. I had to throw it out of the window and I didn't remember what I had written. When the script was completed, the end result was the 1972 film, Aguirre, The Wrath of God. Ich bin der Zorn Gottes. Die Erde, über die ich gehe, sieht mich und bebt. The story begins in the year 1560. Spanish explorer Gonzalo Pizarro sends part of his expedition in search of the Golden Kingdom, El Dorado. The expedition is initially led by Pedro de Ursua, but the mission's second in command, the ruthless Lope de Aguirre, stages a mutiny and takes control after Ursua wants to abandon the search. Power struggles were just part of the challenges faced by the expedition as one of the rafts gets trapped on the river, with the men on board killed by an unknown group. The remaining rafts are swept away by rising water. The expedition is also dealing with the threat of attack from local tribes, some of which seem to practice cannibalism. With the men slowly being killed off, Aguirre continues to push the mission forward, but the remaining men are losing their grip on reality, seeing ships in trees, and unfazed when shot by arrows. With their supplies getting low, repeated attacks, and their rebuilt raft overrun by monkeys, the mission is falling apart. But Aguirre is power hungry, convinced he can still succeed and rule over the entire continent. Aguirre, The Wrath of God is arguably the film that put me on the scene. Although not right away, it took years until audiences started to focus and, and see that there was something unusual there, something like a fever dream in the jungle, something uh, utterly mad, utterly courageous. When making Aguirre the Wrath of God, Herzog did so on a very limited budget. You have to understand that there was a budget of only $360,000 and a crew of not much more than eight people and no time to make it. Filming took place in isolated locations in Peru. For over five weeks, the cast and crew dealt with difficult conditions and limited resources. I think everybody there followed me knowing that it was not going to be easy. And of course, as there was no money, we didn't have enough food. Sometimes I had to sell my boots or my, my wristwatch just to get breakfast. Even with a small budget and the extreme hazards of filming in remote locations, Herzog was able to greatly capture the area's extraordinary landscape. He also takes his time in the film, creating a unique cinematic atmosphere by mixing the tranquility and harshness of nature with a story about the quest for wealth and power that ultimately leads to madness. Herzog also did his best at improvising the story when it became necessary. At one point during production, the river rose and swept away the film's rafts. Herzog added the loss of the rafts into the script, rebuilt, and pressed on. The improvising also included adding animal life from the area into the film. 
While there were a number of challenges faced during the film's production, there is one thing that likely created the most problems for Herzog, and that would be the film's lead actor, Klaus Kinski. While Kinski was an extremely talented and accomplished actor, and at times was able to be kind and pleasant, he is arguably also the most crazed actor in movie history. Herzog is told of times Kinski would go too far during the filming of Aguirre, such as nearly splitting open the head of another performer while swinging his sword. And one night uh, the extras uh, were a little bit noisy and Kinski couldn't take it, grabbed his Winchester rifle and fired three bullets through the walls of their hut and there were 45 of them crammed together. That he didn't kill any one of them is, is a miracle, but he shot the tip of a finger of one of them away. It came to a point where, where I threatened actually to shoot him because he wanted to walk out of the film and, and I was dead serious. He actually understood that it was not a joke anymore and he behaved and became docile. <laughs> Werner Herzog has stated the story for Aguirre the Wrath of God is a fabricated one, but also acknowledged the script is largely based on historical records. Herzog combined elements from different 16th century expeditions and created large elements of the story from the diary of Spanish monk Gaspar de Carvajal. Many other explorers put great effort into locating El Dorado, but none could find it. With these various expeditions spread out over hundreds of years all coming up empty, the general view has been El Dorado is a myth. Some have suggested the origins of the myth refer to a person, a ruler of a territory in South America who would cover himself in gold. But could El Dorado have been a real place? And was it part of something much larger? The view was that humans hadn't entered the Amazon until about a thousand years ago. And then gradually, little by little, that view has begun to change. Mapping efforts from the past few years suggest the story of lost cities in the Amazon are not quite so fictional. Some of the more uh, fascinating pieces of evidence in South America have come out recently mm. about these uh, channels and pathways that they've found in the Amazon yeah. that could not have been created any other way but by humans Absolutely. creating irrigation. It appears like grids, like a city grid. Through the use of LiDAR technology, archaeologists such as Heiko Prumers have been making extraordinary discoveries. Nobody expected that kind of, of society in that region. That's a new thing. Over the past 10 years, LiDAR has been a revolution in archaeological mapping. The technology uses a pulsed laser system that can provide images beneath large areas of vegetation. What LiDAR has revealed in Bolivia is an extensive ancient society spread out over 4,500 square kilometers, including over 900 kilometers of canals and causeways. There is new civilization, new culture waiting for us to study them. It's uh, sort of a dream coming true. But Heiko Prumers realizes there is still much work to be done in exploring these sites. So we need to, to be patient and, uh, and wait for further excavations in those sites to be able to explain something of what we are seeing right now. But the site in Bolivia is not the only one in South America raising questions. Journalist Graham Hancock, whose career focuses on lost and ancient civilizations, has much to say on the various South American sites that have been uncovered over the past few years, and how they connect back to the stories from Spanish explorers from the 16th century. There was a Spanish explorer who went down the Amazon River system in 1541 to 1542. He was the first European to cross the entire length of South America from west to east. He reported seeing incredible cities, advanced arts and crafts, millions of people, a thriving culture. And a hundred years later, when other Europeans got into the Amazon, they couldn't find these cities. So they said, oh, Francisco Oriana, that was his name, made it all up. It was just a fantasy. And then in the last decade, as the clearances of the Amazon have proceeded, we've begun to see the traces of those cities. What happened was that the Spaniards brought smallpox into the Amazon, devastated the local population because there was no immunity to it. There was a massive die off. The cities were deserted. Within a 50 years, they were completely overgrown by the jungle. And that's why they were not seen by the explorers who came in 100 years later. But now the jungle is being cleared. Those cities are emerging. 
Even though new evidence has revealed the existence of previous population centers in the Amazon, El Dorado may still only be a myth. But with much to be discovered in these vast areas of South America, the City of Gold may yet be found.